Ladies and gentlemen, I have got some extremely important positive news for you and for myself and my family and your family. Founders Day in North Korea has come and gone. It's now April 16th there. It's April 15th here, obviously, in the United States. Approximately 45 minutes ago, April 15th ended. North Korean dictator, third generational dictator, Kim Jong-un, had pledged to celebrate the birthday of his dead grandfather, the founder of the North Korean hermit dictatorship, with testing for North Korea a high-powered nuclear weapon in their sixth consecutive test since he came to power. He'd also pledged to fire medium-range ballistic missiles with 900-kilometer range right off the coast of Japan, threatening Tokyo, also threatening Seoul, South Korea. President Trump had sent what he called an armada, multiple task forces, submarine task forces, uh, carrier task force, ground forces, B-52 bombers with nukes loaded, and air launch cruise missiles in Guam had all gone on highest alert because North Korea had been threatening to nuke Seoul, just 30 miles over their border, and had been threatening to nuke Tokyo. Two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, President Trump met with the Chinese communist leader, dictator, and said, listen, they're your problem. They're threatening everybody. We're in business with you. We don't get in your business. Stop it. You fix it or we'll fix it. China came out this week and said, United States, stay out of it. If they test the nuke or they fire a missile, and North Korea's never backed down before, we may nuke them. And they've had a bunch of wars with Korea. It's not like Korea and China are big buddies. But the war never ended in 1953. It was simply a ceasefire. So here's the big news. Trump came in very measured, but said, it's over. The, the clock has run down. You're threatening everyone. We're not appeasing you anymore. The globalists, the CFR, in the mid-90s of the Clintons gave them the reactors so North Korea could have the fissile material to create the atomic bombs. There's many reactors that are clean. Why did the Clintons give them one that would make atomic bombs? To destabilize the peninsula, to be able to use North Korea as a set piece against China, South Korea, and Japan. This is globalism, playing countries off against each other. The Pentagon and Trump and the American people decided to end globalism. Doesn't mean our government's perfect, doesn't mean the military's perfect, doesn't mean Trump's perfect. But it means the old international order is dead. And Peter Thiel has exposed this. Uh, many other top people who aren't really globalists but have been inside the system have been working on the inside to bring it down. We've been working on the outside to bring it down. Ron Paul's been working. But, but Donald Trump really has proven incredible brinksmanship and his move hitting the chemical weapons site, whether it was a false flag or not, sent a message to the Islamicists, uh, to Iran, to Saudi Arabia, to everybody that he will stand up, dropping the Moab uh, two days before this holiday, the big North Korean holiday, their top holiday, when their country was basically founded. That sent a big message, that giant bomb they dropped at Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. And now saying, you do this, you don't just have the U.S. to worry about. China is in on this deal for the first time. China would never make these deals previously to strike or counter-strike North Korea. But China said, fine, we'll hit them first. If they fire missiles at you, you can hit them back. That was the intel we told you about a week ago. Came out in the mainstream news the last few days. I told you from our White House sources, first, we broke it. The reason I raised that is, they're always calling us fake news because they hate the fact we cover real news and have real sources. We had Mike Cernovich on yesterday in studio who broke the Susan Rice thing before anybody else did and was proven documented and so many other things. Same thing here, that Trump does not want a wider war in Syria but that he had to have a stand for strength so that all the parties in the civil war understand that this is not business as usual. So whether you like Trump or not, what he's done has succeeded, a huge success. North Korea backed down. They had pledged to test a nuclear weapon today. That's still the 15th here. It's the 16th there as of, again, 50 minutes ago. As I said here, Texas time, they're now an hour in uh, or so into their new day on the 16th. So they backed down on a nuclear test. They backed down on shooting missiles uh, off the coast of Japan. They've been doing that a whole bunch, as you know. So this is a major de-escalation. Now, will North Korea try something later? Probably. But they're trying to hold everybody hostage, this little, fat, demonic, hereditary dictator. And what Trump did really has worked so far by bringing the Chinese in as partners, by bringing the Japanese in as partners, by bringing the South Koreans in as partners. Kim Jong-un was told that if you make a move, we're going to strike you with conventional weapons. 
And if you try to load missiles with atomics, because they've got spectrum uh, systems and aircraft and satellites that can see radioactive material, we're going to hit you with nuclear weapons and we've got China's authorization. So this is a big deal and I know I can sleep a lot better uh, knowing that for the first time in modern history, since the Korean War started in 1950, North Korea has finally backed down because they're not being appeased by globalists inside our government. It is a massive crime to see CNN today with a big report about Russia doing deals with North Korea when they don't except for buying some rare earth minerals because they, they part of Russia borders North Korea and, and, and then have no proof about it but then to know that our government helped arm North Korea under the Clintons and there's no reportage of that but it was all over the news in the mid 1990s just google it the Clintons that maybe Buckley can pull it up I just type in Clintons transferred reactors to North Korea but look at these headlines they're right there, and there's several others I'm going to go to, where they are suddenly showing their new ICBMs, supposedly, in a parade today. And again, how did they get those ICBMs? That technology was transferred to China and is now leaked to North Korea. The question is, will they actually work? Will they actually launch? We don't know. But North Korea is a complete and absolute dictatorship, and they are a threat. China is a communist dictatorship of the Politburo and the Central Committee. I'm not enemies with any of these countries, but they are trying to influence our country. They're trying to bully us, and we have our own elites making money uh, selling this type of garbage to these people, and this selling out American sovereignty and selling out our secrets is over under Trump. And people that are involved in it are going to be prosecuted, and that's why it's so crazy to see the globalist always saying that, oh, Alex Jones doesn't want war in Syria. He's a... a, you know, a Assad agent, or he didn't want war with Russia, he didn't want to overthrow an elected government in Ukraine, so he must be for the Russians. No, I'm against George Soros bragging on Fareed Zarkaria on CNN that he gave billions of dollars to overthrow an elected government. I don't want a war with Russia. If Russia was in our business, like China, buying up Hollywood, trying to censor films and books and all this, I'd be in Russia's grill. I'm not Russian, I've never been to Russia. I studied it. The reality is humanity is awakening and good things are happening. Now there it is. Thank you, Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton for North Korean nukes. And the Democrats have a long history of it. There's the New York Post. And it goes over all of it. Just please get research, folks. MSM calls anybody that's informed a conspiracy theorist, hoping, like, like they'll call a porn star a star when it's really just a prostitute that has sex on camera. And they get paid like $1,000. Is that a star? I'm not knocking people in porn. The point is, it's, it, it's, it's all labels. Real investigative journalists that have major breaking stories, exclusives like InfoWars, Paul Watson, our great crew, we get called conspiracy theorists by MSM because we're on target, because we really do talk to the White House, because we really do have the sources, because our liberty movement that you and all of us together have promoted and founded is spreading across the world against globalism. So it's a very exciting time to be alive. And... I was really worried about this brinksmanship. I knew North Korea had to be stood up against. They've been out of control. They've been threatening everybody. They've been enslaving and killing their own people. And Trump stood up to them. And so far, this was the day they were going to say, we're, gonna, we're going to shoot our missiles off. We're going to test our nuke. If you try to stop us, we're going to nuke your task force, your armada. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It didn't happen. So this is a big deal. So I thank God for this. I want to thank you all for your prayers. I know I prayed a lot yesterday. I know I had a lot of trouble sleeping last night. I usually sleep like a baby. Uh, I know that I have just been really, really concerned. And so this is good news. Does it mean that the crisis in the, in the South China Sea is over? No. But it means that there is the beginning of a cessation. And China is starting to negotiate now about grabbing all those territorial waters that weren't theirs from Japan, the Philippines, and others. And claiming those most busy shipping lanes in the world. Um... We're seeing so much de-escalation right now. Russia's starting to come to the table on Syria. A lot of good things are happening. And so I'm very, very excited. In closing, Easter is tomorrow, Christian holiday, Christ risen from the dead. I'm a Christian. I'm going to wish Christians everywhere. I saw an Economist magazine article saying worldwide persecution against religious groups is way up. Their map shows where all the Muslims are, but never points out it's Muslims. That's a new article. And I was just thinking about how that Rothschild publication was attacking me in another article for, you know, being this Assad agent with no proof. It's just crazy. Because I'm saying the rebels have a history of false flags. They've been caught doing it. 
And just because I'm saying the same thing as Assad says, I said it before him, by the way, I'm supposedly working for him. Again, we're not allowed to have our own thought processes, our own memories here. But if you go to a David Knight report on Infowars.com, there's a headline dealing with it, uh, the cross under attack, and we have Easter being canceled in one of the largest uh, Christian minority nations in the Middle East, in North Africa, uh, that's Libya. So again, even the UN admits persecution of Christians the last decade has doubled. It's by Muslims. Hindus and Christians get along in India. Hindus and Muslims don't. So I'm not here to bash Muslims. The, the dominant Orthodox Islam is aggressive, is jihadi-based, and is expanding. And the European elite and the globalist elite, just like they were allied with communist North Korea, they've been allied with radical Wahhabist Islam. There's the report. And then there were none. Fed up, fearful Christians leaving the Middle East. Yeah, that's out of The Economist. But that's another article where they admit it. They had one today when I was on their site. It was, it was like another story in the hit piece on me. It was a little story on the side. It was like, oh, worldwide tolerance of religions is way down. And you look at a map, it's all Muslims. Here it is. <laughs> and they show you, here it is. They show you the map. You can probably zoom in on it. Freedom of worship is on the decline in many countries. It's almost all Muslims doing it. It's like 95% of the persecution is Muslims against Christians, but again, they won't even tell you. So if you pull up the story on Infowars.com by David Knight, he links to all the articles where they're blowing up churches. You want to pull up the suicide bombing last week on Palm Sunday, last Sunday? Sure. Let's pull it up on you, bombing Palm Sunday. I mean, you want to see what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. They couldn't get into the full church because the guards wouldn't let them in, so they went out and just blew up a bunch of Muslims in the street because maybe they'd get two or three Christians coming in. What the hell kind of stuff is this? So we're dealing with radical communism coming out of the, the Korean Peninsula and the South China Sea. We're dealing with Islam. These are the real threats, and our elites have been allied with it. They've let in 5 million people the last three years into Europe. 80% plus are military-age men. This is a real issue. What are they doing with this? Why are they covering up the truck attacks, the car attacks, the stabbings, the shootings? Because they've got some bigger plan with these Muslims. And now they've told us, make us give up our rights because we're making them mad and making them blow us up. Now in Stockholm, the government came out and the newspaper said, let's ban cars. Because it's the cars killing people. Nothing about Muslims. Again, on this Easter, this isn't me bashing Muslims. I'm not blowing Muslims up. I'm not stabbing Muslims. I'm not killing Muslims. I'm here seeing bombings all over the Middle East and Christians being killed. Last Palm Sunday and today there's already been bombings and you know there's going to be a bunch tomorrow in Pakistan and Iraq. And of course not in Saudi Arabia, no Christians are allowed there. And of course in Syria. And then what does Assad do on Easter and Christmas? He goes to the Christian churches because he is a crypto Christian. That's well known. And that's why they don't like Assad because he's a Christian and so is his family. So here it is. Here's the bombing. Let's zoom in a little bit over there. Now let's show. This is this is this this is what they do on Palm Sunday last Sunday. This is what they do. They plant their bomb. They creep off, and yo, well, we can't get inside the church to blow everybody up. So let's just let's just get who we can, even if it's some Muslims on the street. And that's your religion of peace right there. So I want listeners to understand something. The only way this video goes viral because we're about to end it. It won't be live anymore. Is if you post it on Facebook, Twitter, Google, on your Instagram, on your whatever it is, you have to humanly do it now because they're blocking us being able to share it. They admit they're censoring us. They're cutting us off. So I want to thank you all for your support. Infowars is under unprecedented globalist attack. All sorts of boycotts, kicking us off ad roll and Google ads. So please understand we have a lot of big specials running through Monday. 40% off some of the best gravity-fed filters. Filter your kids' water. The Nomad Pro Pure is the best out there. Support us. Support the broadcast. You can't lose. That's how you donate. You get great products. We've got up to 30% to 40% off a bunch of the supplements at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. And that helps fund uh, Harrison coming in on the weekend, Buckley coming in on the weekend. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and show everybody this. I'm going to go ahead and show you what we're doing real quick. Here, here, let's go in here. But whatever you do, are you sharing the link to this video right now? Now, here we are. They just bought.